What can I buy with a little less premium, especially now because premiums are crazy? Um, well, there's your answer. Dumb faces for you. <laughs> What's, What's up? Oh, man. <laughs> I actually got that recorded just oh, that's now. Good. That'll be my next thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> so, my friend, look, the silver market has been all over the place. Um, we've seen it spike up. It came down. Now it seems to be leveling out again. Volatility. Volatility. People are asking me, what is the best stuff to stack right mm. now? And you and I are always talking about um, constitutional silver. You, you know, you've been great in terms of supplying me with a lot of it that I'm able to you know give to the viewers on the auctions yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about this stuff because well this is not constitutional but this is something that I've been kind of meaning to oh, bring to everybody's foreign. attention yeah talk about so, it. everybody's asking all the time I get asked all the time everybody's asking stormy all the time you know when you go to a coin shop what kind of deals are there to be had you know you're looking for something what can I buy with a little less premium especially now because premiums are crazy um, well there's your answer the uh, your foreign silver, um, you can pick this up for pretty cheap, just a few percent over melt in most cases. Um, I know this has been very popular on platforms like eBay, but places like that. But it's a really good place to pick up uh, silver for cheap. Um, and I'm assuming that these constitutional, well, I call them constitutional because I know that they're mixed with other stuff aside from just silver, right? They probably have like nickel or other uh, copper and they're mostly like copper and nickel right I should say i'm just listening to me they're, they're mostly mixed with copper in them they're, there's all different purities in the foreign silver which i think maybe sometimes people tend to steer away from it because of that but overall um if you're a little bit savvy and you pick through you can get a pretty high purity 900 is certainly obtainable that's a good one 35 is another one that's very obtainable um, like your all your Canadian silver, and mostly that's eight hundred. The earlier stuff is sterling; it's nine two five. So that's even better. It is. It is. So I mean, not a bad, and you can get it for pretty cheap. Is this a Balboa? That thing? It's got like the. That is. Yeah, that is. There you go. And that's another, not necessarily numismatic. Now the larger Balboas, certainly people are all over those. I sell those like crazy. In fact, as I don't, I doubt I even have one in here. Um, but the smaller dime size, for some reason. People are just not interested in that stuff. So, what I am a motivated seller because I, I'm not selling it on the whole on the retail. Right. And do you see a lot of people come in to buy this stuff because they're you know looking for the deals? Do they you know are they doing it to change up their stack in terms of variety? Because people do get sick of you know stacking the same thing. Like, what is usually the a person's motivation to buy this stuff? Usually, in my opinion, it's just a premium. Okay. It's just cheaper. Normally, you can, again, you can pick the stuff out either melt or just a few percent over melt. Okay. So there's no other silver on the planet that you could buy that cheap. Right. Especially when you walk into a retail store like myself. I got to keep my lights on and all that, but this just doesn't command the premiums. Where do you get this? Like This you, is you, all you, stuff that's come in in collections. It comes in in dribs and drabs. You know, a little couple pieces here. Sometimes um, every once in a while, I'll have somebody come in with a bunch of just foreign. Uh -huh. And traditionally, what I'll do is, if you did that, I'll pick all the silver pieces out for you and pay you accordingly. And then we buy the, the, the rest of the silver, or I'm sorry, the foreign by the pound. How do you know all the different coins just because you've been doing this for so long? Like, I mean, there's so many different coins here from so many different countries and time periods. Like, I wouldn't know, you know, what silver and what... You know, what isn't silver? Well, really? silver is silver at the end of the day, you know? So when you have clad mixed in with silver, most of the time, you can just see it by its appearance. Okay. Um, now, this is, I'm not, not all this stuff is silver, of course, but these are sort of my catch-all bins. Okay. Oftentimes, when I get silver pieces, I just dump them into these bins. Okay. So and these I aren't... I may not have sorted through any of this. I just wanted to kind of bring it out to do the video. Oh, I see. Okay. So, like, here, I, oh, I, I saw this one here, this Canadian... Moose or something. I thought the I other thing about here. buying foreign silver too, which is attractive to a lot of people, is there's a lot of nice. Uh, there's gems to be had in there. Okay. If you're a little bit savvy, uh, you certainly could get some pieces that'll have a little bit of a premium for their um, numismatic qualities. So you know how we have the Red Book, yep. and it talks about all United States coinage. Is there any sort of book that speaks to? all just like foreign silver like this or there's foreign world books that us dealers use okay well 
Oh my god. This is like the Bible for world coins. This is one of them. There's actually Holy three of them. <laughs> so it, it's usually by an error. Right. You know, and then... Whatever. Oh my god. Correct. So you have to dig. <sighs> you know what, to be honest with you, I use a new Mista a lot. Okay. I dig in there, and sometimes I don't even really know what the piece is, but I kind of know where the country from it is. Uh-huh. And I'll just look at the pictures. Is New Mist a website? Or it is, is that... a website, and you can go on there. It tells you the purity. It kind of gives you a little bit of a background on it. Yeah. So So and... what's the most common in terms of if, if somebody was coming to get a deal with you and they were looking to buy um, some of the foreign silver? What I would do for myself is um, I would just – I normally just do this in bags. Okay. So I'll sell you a bag, like a, a pound of it, for example. Um, I'll do it by weight. I, okay. I'll do it by bulk. I'm, I'm, pr- I'm not going to sit here and pick out Each all the 835 pieces. I see. All the 400. So I'm not, I just don't have time for that. I, I, it's just not worth my time. So when you're selling to customers, you'll – same thing. Like you'll just grab different bags, almost like a grab bag, throw in a pound, two pounds. Like how much of the foreign do you want? And exactly. How much do you want by weight? And then I'll usually work out a deal with you saying, all right, well, it's, it's X amount of dollars per uh, ounce okay. or X amount of dollars per gram, you know, however you want to do it. And I kind of just look at a cross section and say roughly the percentage or purity of this silver is going to be, I don't know, 800, right. let's say. Right. And you know, I mean, occasionally, if you catch me in a good mood, uh, you can come in here and pick through these bins. That's you rare. Know, I'll just stick them in front. I know, I'm a grumpy guy. <laughs> uh, you could just pick through the bins. I don't really care. Yeah. But if you're in here cherry picking all the stuff out of there, uh, yeah, it's gonna it start to agitate yeah, you. Don't think that that's gonna all go towards. I'm not gonna sell it to you a spot. Sure. The reason I can sell all this stuff at spot or close to spot is because it's a mix of everything. So I'm kind of getting rid of some of my lesser desirable pieces along with some of the better pieces. So it's a right. little bit of cream in it for you, and right. it's also good for me. So maybe we'll do some of these on an upcoming auction then, if that's something that you're Definitely. open to, because we haven't, you know, we haven't done that before. I've done maybe. A couple, you know, pieces that were, you know, I don't know, specific to, you know, specific country or, you know, Canadian or Balboas or something. And like you said, the bigger ones. Um, but we've never done something like that where it's yeah, just like a grab This is all bag. over the world. There's Middle Eastern stuff here. There's some Chinese stuff in here. There's some it's Canadian, uh, Mexican, as you can see, South America. Yeah. This What's is this? also something we do. We do one pound bags of just miscellaneous foreign coins. It's totally random. Okay. Um, so it could be like pesos, pennies. It's everything just in here. Yeah, there's a lira. You know, there's, okay. There's just a little bit of everything. See, in like there. a menorah right there. I'm yeah, wondering that's, if that's yeah. from like Israel or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm sure that it is. Like it's just a, a, a mix of everything. We do it by the pound. It's six bucks a pound. So okay. A little Mexican stuff. So uh, somebody that's just looking to get something as a gift for a kid mm-hmm. or whatever, they're interested in just the variety of coins from all over the, the world. The other thing too is most coin dealers in the United States, I'm not saying all of them, we don't know it all. I, I absolutely will not sit here and tell you I know everything there is to know about all the world coins. There's no way. I often have to refer to my book. Yeah. Um, so again, is there a possibility there's something good in here? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. What is this? I just picked this up. It's got all of the... Were these, like, worn as jewelry? It was a jewelry piece, yeah. It was yeah. like a bracelet so or something. At one time, when I had the time, I used to break, make it down in bags of purity. Okay. Um, I, I just don't have the time. No, for that. now you just can't. So these are, again, just mixed. In the, you just don't have, like, one giant bin. These are yeah, all as just... I pull the, the... I go through it. I pull as much of the silver out as I can out of the regular right. foreign stuff, and I just take it literally hand load it right into these bins. Huh. All right. So, so we'll, there's some old stuff. I mean, there's definitely mid 1800 stuff in here. I doubt you're not going to find something from the 17s, but like this is a better piece right there. What is it? <laughs> what is that thing? I, remember, <laughs> I mean, again, I'm not. I it? would never profess to you to tell you that I am a right. master of the, all the foreign coins. There's right. a 50 cent piece from Canada. That's not a bad piece either. Right. It's pretty decent. So maybe we'll do something. You know, why not uh, give people a chance to own some silver at even lower prices? Um, I really appreciate the time you know, to talk about this. This is something, you know, newer that we haven't really done before. Yeah. Also, um, the world gold. That's another thing I want to bring up. Let's do that in another video. We'll do that in another video. But that's another chapter where you can definitely buy gold at a much lesser. Normally, um, 2 to 4% over melt. Yeah. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Let's do. Let's, we're gonna. We're gonna end this video now, and we're gonna do that video next. All right. Moving on. All right, buddy. See you later. Later. And I would like to quickly thank these elite channel supporters. And if you haven't already become a channel member, please check out the awesome perks and join today. With that, this is Empire Precious Metals. Until next time, long live the empire.